product and UX design. Today, we are finally going to give you a look at the PlayStation 5 user experience. We will see some of the features that enable games to work together with the hardware and network to deliver a truly next generation experience. Our vision for a PS5 user experience is simple. We believe that your playtime is valuable and should be meaningful. PlayStation team members from all around the world work to deliver a PS5 experience that is completely centered on you, the player, connecting you with a great play and a passionate community of gamers. With a look and feel that's designed for 4K TVs, the PS5 user experience was built from the ground up to take advantage of the console capabilities, complementing the transformative games coming with this new generation. I should note that this video tour is from a pre-production environment on the PS5 console, so there may be a few small wrinkles or minor changes once the console launches in November. And now, let's check it out courtesy of our own Sid Schumann. Thanks, Nishino-san. Welcome to your new PlayStation 5 console experience. This time, we've started off from rest mode. We've already created an account and signed into PlayStation Network, so let's log in. In this case, I've resumed right where I left off in Sackboy, A Big Adventure. And here, we're looking at PlayStation 5's Control Center. From here, it's one click and we're right back into the game, but let's take a moment and look around. The Control Center is always one tap of the PlayStation button away. It provides immediate access to almost everything you need from the system without leaving the game. This includes things like seeing who is online, checking the status of a download, managing your controller, power, and more. These colorful characters are called cards, and they let you interact with games and the system in a variety of ways. First, as we've just resumed, the Control Center is showing a special card that allows me to get up to date on recent stories posted by publishers for games I am following. Another card here shows me recent media I've captured from my gameplay using the Create button on the DualSense controller. Let's check out one of the most powerful new features of the PS5 console. They're actually just to the right in this row, and we call them activities. Activities are part of the plan to remove barriers to gameplay. Let's get an example of one way they're used in Sackboy A Big Adventure. With a tap of the PlayStation button, I'm back to playing the game. Sackboy A Big Adventure is packed with things to discover, and each level represents one type of activity I can play, many of which I can go back to later to discover more. I tap the PlayStation button to bring up the Control Center again. I can see a number of available activities, both active and suggested by the system. Let's take this first one, A Big Adventure, as an example. I can see that I haven't quite completed this level yet. I'm at 33%. Let's open it up and see more. Here I can see more information, including key objectives I haven't met. And I'm seeing a very important piece of information here. It says about 10 minutes left. This is PlayStation 5's personalized playtime estimate, giving me an idea how long it will take me to complete this activity. Some activities even let you jump directly to that place in the game. But there's more to see here. For another example, let's open that activity back up. missed an objective to find the monk robes costume piece. Looks like I need a little help. Some in-game activities, like this one, offer official game help. Game help is included as a benefit for active PlayStation Plus members in some PS5 games. In this case, I can open up that objective to get some hints without resorting to a web search or digging through long videos or articles that might contain spoilers. This particular hint is a video, and I can play it here in the car, and I can expand it to get a bigger view without leaving the game. Sometimes it's really useful to be able to see the hint on screen while you play. Some cards can be put in a picture-in-picture -picture mode, or as shown here, a side-by-side -side view. Super cool. And if you pin a card, you can access it via the control center at any time. Now let's go find those rascally monk robes. 
makes game help. The team at PlayStation wanted to make it really easy to chat with your friends on the PlayStation 5 console. So let's check out how it works. Here, I'm opening an interactive notification with a tap of the PlayStation button, and I've decided to join the voice chat that my friend just entered. Now, my friend could have done this on the PlayStation app for mobile devices, from a PS4, or in this case, from a PS5. The DualSense controller features an integrated microphone, too, so I could start talking right away. But I always have the ability to hit the mute button on the controller or in the menus. Parties take on an expanded role with PS5, and they now provide persistent spaces to connect with groups that you play with. Here I have a couple of friends chatting away in the party. One of them has started sharing their screen with the group. Looks like they're playing Uncharted The Lost Legacy. We can chat while we play, and I can watch his progress as well. This is another card that can be put in picture-in-picture -picture mode or pinned to the side while you play. You can access it anytime via the control center too, but let's dismiss it for now. Okay, let's review. So far, we've seen how activities on PS5 will make it easier and faster to hop back into PS5 games, and how you can get in-game help and chat with your friends. So that leaves online multiplayer gaming. Let's check it out. I see that some of my friends are online, so it's time to say goodbye to Sackboy for now and spin up a match of Destruction All-Stars. One of my friends in the party has already started a match, and we can join them from this card in Control Center. And there we go. Destruction All-Stars now quickly starts thanks to PS5's ultra-high-speed SSD. Okay, I think we've got enough people on our party, so let's jump in. We're keeping the focus on PS5's user experience today, so let's zip ahead so we can see more. And just like that, we're in. We don't have time to play a full match today, but I do think we have time to take a quick photo. To do that, I'll just tap the Create button on the DualSense controller. PS5 is always capturing recent gameplay, but when you compose a shot, even using in-game photo mode, you can capture a high-quality screenshot here. This optimizes capturing the moment, letting you review and choose to share later on. I should mention, screenshots and video can be captured at up to 4K on the PS5 console. Okay, so far we've shown off how to jump into activities, how to chat with your friends, get into groups together to play, capturing gameplay, all of that while in-game. But what if I want to play a different game? Welcome to the PlayStation 5 home screen. This is where you'll land when you start up from a powered off state and where you'll go when you want to choose a new game to play or download. The layout of the space is designed to present games and game content beautifully on a 4K display with simple and super fast access to what you need. And in case you're wondering, media related apps will have their own space like this one, but today we're focused on gaming. Each game has its own hub completely integrated, so all you need to do is scroll down to see activities you can jump right into. Video clips, stories about the game, DLC, and more. Backward compatible PS4 titles will benefit from some of these features too. Let's move one spot to the left and check out Explore, which brings together all your games. We saw a view of this from the Control Center earlier, and another view will also be in the new PlayStation app for mobile devices. Explore keeps you in the loop with official stories from PlayStation and from all the games you're following, including trending media from the community. We'll be testing and learning about this feature in the US at launch, so not everyone will have this on day one, but it gives you a good idea of the direction. And this is PlayStation Store for PS5. It's completely integrated into the system. It's not a standalone app anymore. Browsing for new games to play will be easier thanks to the speed of PS5 and a more personalized store experience. And here, you'll be able to browse the latest games and deals. You'll find PS5 games and many backward compatible PS4 games too. I'm sad to say, but we are almost out of time. So let's pull up Control Center one more time with a tap of the PlayStation button. 
On our way out, why don't we quickly share that photo we took in Destruction All-Stars? We can find recently captured media in this handy card in Control Center. From here, we can do some quick edits, but I think I'm ready to share it right now. On PlayStation 5, I have the option to share videos and images to supported external services, or I can send them directly to one of my parties. Remember, parties are bigger than just voice chat now, so I'll select one of my favorite parties here. Let's attach a quick message here. The DualSense controller makes this really easy. PlayStation 5 supports voice dictation in a number of languages, so you no longer have to type messages with the keyboard if you don't want to. Simply select the microphone button. Here's a cool detail. If my friend hasn't yet played the activity where I captured this video, and the game's developer thinks that activity might contain spoilers, they'll receive a warning before they do. Well, that's it for our demo. There are many more exciting features we couldn't get to today, but we're super excited to share more of the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation Map user experience with you in the coming weeks headed to launch. And of course, this was just the first look at what fans can expect on day one. The team at PlayStation is committed to evolving this experience with our community in the months ahead. We look forward to sharing more. Thanks for watching. PlayStation.